Hello, and welcome to Unlimited Free Time, a YouTube channel where we waste time together. It's me, it's Dylan. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. If this is your second time or you're returning to the channel, hey, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you really enjoy the video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different from what we normally talk about. Uh, this isn't necessarily film related. This is more related to just creating content in general, but it's something that I've been feeling a lot recently and something that I wanted to maybe sit down and talk about more maybe to myself as like its own little therapy session, but also something that I think that a lot of other video creators can relate to and feel <laughs> feel about. Uh, and that is uh, the kind of idea and self-fulfilling prophecy of self-doubt. So I don't know if you are a YouTuber, if you're a filmmaker, if you're an aspiring musician, any of these things. I don't know if you're a creator of some form. But for me, I think the thing that I always struggle with most whenever it comes to creating anything is the idea that I am not good enough. And that self-doubt is prevalent throughout everything that I make. I'm always constantly worried that no matter what I do, no matter how much I improve and that I grow, that it will never be enough to make me successful, to, to bring in the type of audience and attention that I'm hoping to receive. And I can't lie, I'm not gonna, I can't deny that the idea of being successful on YouTube is really appealing to me. Not only because I kind of love the idea of this being something that I started from complete nothing and then bringing it up to something that is profitable and uh, successful, but it also would be more confirmation that the ideas and things that I care about, other people care about and people want to see, and that that is worth my time. Maybe I'm not explaining this correctly. I worry a lot. That's basically my baseline state whenever I'm doing something, pretty much ever. I'm always worried that I am not skilled enough, that I'm not smart enough, that I'm not enough. I think that word enough is just like a huge part of me. Like, is it enough? Am I doing enough? Am I enough? I can't stop thinking about it. And since quarantine started, and since I've started making YouTube videos, I've been feeling it more and more. Because I also sadly had this thing where I can't help but compare myself to other people who are in the kind of same field as me. Whenever I look at somebody like a Drew Gooden or a Cody Ko or any of these other amazing channels that I love to follow, there's a part of me that's so in admiration of what they're doing and is so grateful for them making that content. But then there's another part of me that isn't jealous. It's, it's worried that I'll never get to that standard or that I'll ever be good enough to potentially work with those people or that this channel will never take off in such a way that I can look back on it and go, oh man, I'm so glad I did that, which is so stupid because I'm already so glad that I've done this. <laughs> There's a weird thing about my brain, and I think it's pretty true about anybody who's creative. There's this amazing part of us that is so confident in what we're doing and this idea that we can make this stuff and it's going to be worthwhile and it's worth your time. You have to be confident to make anything. You kind of have to go outside of yourself and be like, yes, I'm going to do this. This is going to exist in the world and I'm going to make it. That takes a lot of fucking balls or ovaries if you're a girl. Uh, and the idea that that part of yourself can also live alongside, in my case, the idea that I'm constantly worried that I am not good enough at the things that I'm making, that my setup isn't good enough, that the uh, editing that I'm doing isn't funny enough, that I am not a good enough presenter, that I'm not attractive enough. All of these things that go through my brain all of the time make me feel really confused at myself sometimes as a person. 
Because in some regards, I'm so utterly confident in the choices I've made when it comes to filmmaking. And then on the other hand, I am constantly always worried about picking filmmaking as a career because I'm worried that I'm not good enough at it. <laughs> it's a really big dichotomy. I don't necessarily know how to come to terms with it. And it's become more evident as I've been doing YouTube. I think YouTube and, and social media in general is all about this almost like instant gratification, right? Like you work really hard on this thing and then you put it out into the world and people either instantaneously almost love it, hate it, or don't notice it. Those seem to be like the three options that I've been given when it comes to creating content for YouTube. It's either really well received, it's not received well at all, or it just doesn't get seen at all. And those are three levels of not particular fun. <laughs> like each of its own levels has stuff that I don't like. Like the idea of one of my videos going viral sounds really cool, right? Like that sounds like the ideal thing that you would want for any video to do. But then of course there's this part of me that's worried that if it does go viral, uh, it'll get so much more hate because people on the internet can be really mean. <laughs> and that when people are really mean to you on the internet, it does have a little bit of a psychological toll on you as a person. Then there's the whole aspect of if people do genuinely hate the video, do I change my style? Should I be a different person? I don't want to change who I am so that I can create content for people. I want to make the content that I care about, not whether or not people hate it or not. But I do want to make content that people like. And then of course there's the third option where it's just like, nobody's seen it and nobody cares. And it's just crickets. And I think that one might be the hardest of all because even if you're getting a lot of hate, you still know that people are engaging with it. And I guess that makes up for all of the effort that you put into it. Because most of my videos take anywhere from eight to 14 hours to make. From the filming, to the editing, to the uploading, all that stuff usually encompasses about a full work day, if not more. And the idea that you put something out in the world and it just nobody cares hurts a little bit. It's one of those things where you're just like, oh man, that sucks. I don't even know how to put it into words sometimes where it's just like this, this like little ache, this little longing inside of yourself where you're just like, man, I wish people had seen that. I wish people recognized my ability or I wish people saw this thing I make because I love this thing that I make. And I've been really kind of dealing with that when it comes to YouTube. It's a little bit different when you're making a film because one, films usually take a pretty damn long time to make. From pre-production to actual production to post to it eventually coming out, usually you have plenty of time to come to terms with if it's a good movie or not, how much of a you know, success or failure you think it's gonna be, all of these other things that kind of come into it, but YouTube's a little bit different. I put a video out a week, and every week I'm always worried or excited about the thing that I'm putting, putting out into the world. And up to this point, I would say thank you to every single one of the people who has subscribed to my channel. I genuinely, deeply, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate it. I can't believe 86 of you watch my stuff. That feels so good to me. But once again, there is another part of my brain that is always worried that if I don't get better, or if I don't grow, or if this channel doesn't do well, what does that say about me as a filmmaker? What does that say about me as a content creator? What does that say about this dream that I have of doing movies? And I don't know. It's a lot of, a lot of emotions, a lot of stuff that kind of goes, that kind of goes into it that I, I can't stop thinking about. But I know every content creator goes through because I've seen so many of them talk about it. But I just wanted to make a video about that today because that's what I've been kind of going through. That's what I've been kind of feeling. There's a 50% part of me that is so fucking glad that I started this YouTube channel and it has been keeping me sane throughout this quarantine. But then there is another part of me that is 
so weirdly wrapped up in like the social media-ness of it. This whole kind of idea that I need to be more prominent on social media and I need more attention. And I don't like that part of myself. I think that part of myself is kind of fucking gross and I don't like it. But it is part of the industry that I am in and something that I need to come to terms with. And if this YouTube channel helps me get better at it, then fuck, that's great. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, that's the end of this video. I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time and talk about kind of what I've been feeling and what I've been going through. Um, once again, to everybody who's followed, thank you so much for watching and commenting and liking the videos. It does really mean the world to me right now. Like I said, YouTube has been keeping me kind of sane as I've been, uh, going through quarantine. Um, to every single one of the people who I've done like a YouTube Appreciation Society video who's like retweeted it and talked about it or messaged me afterwards, thank you so much. That does mean a ton to me. And I'm even thinking about doing a video about how much a, a shout out from another creator can really change how you feel and about your mindset and about how it can really give you the confidence that you maybe need in that moment. Um, if you'd like to see a documentary that I've made, it is available on iTunes and at my website. Uh, if you'd like to listen to a podcast that I am doing with a friend, we're up to episode two now. It's all about pop culture and things that we're passionate about. It is called Pop Culture Party People, and it's here on YouTube, and it's basically anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. Uh, so yeah, that is the end of this episode of Unlimited Free Time. As I say at the end of every single one of these, shit, waste your time wisely.